I give it a year, which is described as an anti-rom-com, says on the poster from the studio that brought you Four Weddings and Funeral and uh, Bridget Jones's Diary. Rafe Spall and Rose Byrne are newlyweds. He's um, an author who is slightly writer's blocked. She is uh, an advertising executive. Who I mean, they seem terribly mismatched, <laughs> hence the title. Stephen Merchant is their appalling best man. Minnie Driver is the sister who seems to hate her husband and who mutters the title within the first 10 minutes, 10 minutes of the movie. You know, there's a society you do that thing that somebody says, says that they would give it 10 minutes. Basically, as they say, I do, she says, I give it a year, at which point a certain section of the audience would applaud and leave. Almost immediately, they hit problems because it's apparent to absolutely everybody that they have nothing in common at all. She starts to fall for and slightly flirt with this yank hunk played by Simon Baker. He, on the other hand, has never apparently properly broken up with his very uh, ecologically uh, inclined and save the world type girlfriend, Anna Faris, heard here in a scene with Stephen Merchant. I suppose that's not really your thing, is it, sex and sexiness? You're more, how do you describe yourself? Kind of kind, do you know what I mean? Charitable. It's a shame in a way that they couldn't put your brain in her body. Do you know what I mean? That would be amazing. Although, what would you be left with? You'd be left with, like, oh, you'd be left with her brain in your body. Imagine that. Just rampaging around, out of control. Ah! What's that? It's like, oh my God, it's like Frankenstein, but with, like, boobs. Ah! Villagers coming out with pitchforks and torches. Kill it! That would be just terrifying. It would be terrifying. It'd be horrible. Nah, joking. Joking. I'd do, yeah. If you wanted. You know. Thank you. If I had to make a top 10 of women I know that I would do, you'd be in that list. Number seven. All right? Thank you. Seriously. Thanks, Danny. Do you want to get a drink sometime? Maybe pop out and get a drink sometime? Um, no. Yeah. No. You say no, I say yes. <laughs> Stephen Merchant's character sounds sort of Alan Partridge-esque, really, just completely socially inept and making... Yeah, but also, I mean, also definitely doing the, you know, the, the Merchant and Gervais thing. I mean, here's, here's the problem. Um... Richard Curtis has got an awful lot to answer for. And the main thing he has to answer for is that when he did Four Weddings, I don't think a lot of people didn't realise at the time just how perfect that was. And it gave the impression, I think, that it's easier to do a perfect wedding comedy than perhaps it is. Now, OK, it may be unfair to compare everything with Four Weddings in the way that it's unfair to compare everything with Shaun of the Dead, but the fact is, since the poster makes that comparison, it's impossible not to. Also, if you have a film which opens with a wedding, has got a scene in which a vicar stumbles over doing the, 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 the wedding vows, has got an excruciating best man speech these it is inviting comparison with four weddings and the fact is that when you compare it to four weddings it makes you realize just how great four weddings was the most important and incidentally four weddings didn't have just one one but two brilliantly terrible best man speeches the first of which was brilliantly brilliant the second of which was brilliantly terrible what richard curtis managed to do was despite the fact that most of the people in that film were not you know probably on the same social uh, strata as most of the audience. I mean, at one point, Curtis said that they, that they were thinking of calling the film Toffs on Heat. You did care about all the characters. I mean, you really did care about what happened, even when Andy McDowell was being quite insufferable and getting having to deliver what then was subsequently called by one magazine the worst line ever in movie history, which was, is it raining? I hadn't noticed. All those are... I thought you, it was quite nice. Yeah, well, exactly. Of course you thought it was quite nice. And the reason you did was because what Curtis did was he made you care about the characters. You did care about them. You genuinely cared what happened to all of them, even though you may not have been cut from the same social cloth as them because they come from a particular strata of society. And that's the genius of what he did. Also, his film structurally is really, really hard to, uh, hard to fault. And we forget just how perfectly honed it is. I mean, again, people have been referring to Groundhog Day as a perfectly written piece. I would say that... Four Weddings is absolutely up there. What you get in the case of this, I mean, Richard Curtis, you know, he comes out of Blackadder. This is Dan Mazur, who comes out of working with Sasha Baron Cohen on Borat and Ali G. So consequently, the humour is coarser and more vulgar. And now that's not to say that there's a problem with coarseness and vulgarity. I mean, Four Weddings starts off with, you know, an endless repetition of the F word. I mean, as Emma Freud herself said, they played it in some places in America and people walked out after the first two minutes because they couldn't believe the sound of Hugh Grant swearing because that's all that happens for the opening of the movie it is just swear 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 swears and also there's nothing wrong with bawdiness either 
what ha what the problem is at the heart of I give it a year is I don't care about or believe in any of the people. And in the absence of caring about or believing in any of the people, what you're left with is a series of comedy set pieces. Now that in itself doesn't mean it's not funny because some of those comedy set pieces are quite funny. You have Olivia Coleman as a marriage guidance counselor who's screaming at her husband down the phone on a mobile phone. That is quite funny. You have the individual Stephen Merchant bits, which you know, individually are quite funny. You have the little set pieces. What you don't have is anything that approaches proper emotional engagement. And therefore what you don't get is melancholia. What you don't get is the thing which is really important to all comedy, which is whether it's somebody, you know, standing on a garden rake that smacks them in the face or sitting on a custard, but whatever it is, that stuff only works if you have some kind of emotional investment in it. Otherwise, it isn't anything. It is just a series of gags. And I'm not saying that I give it a year doesn't have any laughs in it at all, because it, you know there are laughs in there, not as many as I would have liked, but there are laughs in there. A lot of it was, you know, slightly didn't work for me. But the underlying emptiness of it is that I don't believe in the characters, and I don't care about the characters, and I don't believe in the narrative, and I, and I don't believe for one minute the central couple have any. What I it's not that their relationship is falling apart, it's that I don't believe in their relationship in the first place. And that is, for me, a fundamental problem. And that's why I would say that on the one hand, you have four weddings, which is a perfect piece of this kind of wedding drama. And on the other hand, you have this. This is not to say that it's not funny. People laughed. I laughed, you know, a few times, and it was perfectly, but it doesn't have any of that through line. And that's a major fault.